You are listening to a Redeemed Christian Fellowship podcast produced by Hearing Heart Multimedia in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope this message is an encouragement to your faith and brings insight through the Word of God in your pursuit of God's perfect plan for your life. Please find us online and social media at Redeemed Christian Fellowship for additional broadcast and ministry resources. Good afternoon, RC family. Thank you for joining me for the afternoon podcast. Um, God is so good. We're going to um, jump into this teaching. This teaching is called Responding to Famine. And let's, uh, let's jump off with prayer. God, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Father, that your word doesn't return void, but it goes out to accomplish and do everything that it's set forth to do. Lord, we thank you, Lord, as we, as we study your word, Father, that it brings a renewal to our mind and that we can go out and be doers of the word and not just hearers only. And we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God is so good. We're going we're gonna to talk about responding to famine. Um, we're going into a time in our economy where the world is in recession. But it's important for us to know as Christians that we aren't living subject to the world. We're living subject to what we do as believers and how we respond as believers and what we believe as believers. And so this is um, in Job chapter 5, verse 21. It says, Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. So it's, it's interesting to look at this, that when the world panics in the time of recession, the world panics when things are looking like they're tightening up. But the response of the believer is, we laugh, because we have inside information. We have an alternative reality, different than what the world system is trying to project. So it's in, in I want to look at uh, Isaac. I want to, if you want to turn in your Bibles, we're going to look at Genesis 26. Isaac's really been on my heart this week. I'm just kind of pondering how he lived. Obviously, he is the son of Abraham, and Abraham we know was blessed. We know the covenant was established under Abraham. Um, Isaac, in verse 1 of Genesis 26, it says, There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down to Egypt. Dwell in the land where I shall tell thee of. Now, Egypt would have been the place to go because Egypt would have had provision. So when there was a time of famine, these, you know, the, the world was moving to where they could get provided for. And God is telling him, don't go down to Egypt. Don't do it the world's way. Dwell in the land where I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, verse 3, and I will be with thee and I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And you remember, um, if, you, if you were listening last week, that we talked about how Abraham, how we are blessed with faithful Abraham, how the covenant that God established with Abraham for provision, for protection, for preservation, that, that, that we are partakers of that covenant. So we can walk in the benefits of that covenant. Well, the same thing is what God's telling him. God is telling Isaac here. He's saying, look, I established that oath and I'll perform it not just for your father, but I'll perform it for you being his seed. And I will make thy seed to multiply, verse 4, as the stars of the heaven. I will give unto thy seed all these countries and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes and my laws. And so then we see in verse 6 that Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And if you want to turn over to verse 12, it says, Then Isaac sowed in that land. Now remember, that land was struck with famine. So there was famine in that land. When things are, are dry and there's not water, and that means your seed, when you try to sow in a time of famine, in the natural, your seed is just going to dry up, and it's just going to be lost. But we see Isaac sowed in that land, and he received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward, and he grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great store of servants. And the Philistines that were watching him and looking at him, they envied him. So isn't that so interesting? This is, it's so important when we, when we look at a time of famine, it's so important to look at that not through the eyes of the world, but look at it through what does the Scripture say? What does the Word of God tell us to do? And in times of famine, it's not time to panic. It's not time to restrict and to stop sowing. 
Ecclesiastes 11, it says this, it says, Cast thy bread upon the water, for thou shalt find it after many days. In verse 4 it says, He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. So when you start looking at a time of famine, when, when the economy is going into recession and everyone and everything is telling you bad news, look to what the Word of God says. Because the Word of God says, don't be looking at that wind and don't be looking at those clouds. He's saying uh, in the morning, verse 6, in the morning sow thy seed and in the evening withhold not thine hand. Now is not a time to stop working the principles. Now is a time to do the Word. It's the doer of the Word that's blessed in all his doing. The Holy Ghost, <laughs> he asked me this week, he said, do you want to be a teacher of prosperity or do you want to live in prosperity? And I know what he was saying. He was saying, do you just want to say it and talk about it? Or do you want to experience it and actually live it? And I don't want to just, I don't want to just teach the word on prosperity. I want to see prosperity function in my life. I want to see tremendous blessing, the, way, the blessing that the word of God describes. That's what I want to see functioning in my life. It's not enough just to talk it and hear it. We, we wanna, we're believing to God to actually see this come to pass. And when the economy is good, the last couple of years, we've gone through a really good economy for a lot of us. Well, when a good economy, everybody's prospering. But when it gets tight and when we go into recession, then the people who are doing the word really get to show out what God can do. And, and they get to have a testimony of, yeah, look, God's blessed us tremendously. So when we go into a time of recession and people start getting tight and people start panicking, but we're just walking in peace and we're walking in prosperity and we're walking in the blessing of God because our seed works for us, that's an opportunity to give glory to God and to be able to reach people with, with uh, salvation, with the promises of God. It's, a, it's an opportunity for us to give God glory and for God to get the glory. So Cast thy bread upon the water, for thou shalt find it after many days. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. Verse 5, Ecclesiastes 11 says, As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, or how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike and good. So this is an encouragement. Don't get stingy just because the world's starting to have to tighten up. Proverbs 11, 24, it says, There is that scattereth and yet increaseth, and there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. These are spiritual truths. Like if you sow, you shall reap. But if you withhold, it will tend to poverty. You, you've, if you've ever stepped out and sowed seed before, which talking to you guys, I know you have. When you give, it's, it's tremendous to watch the, the increase flow because you're doing something that should be decreasing your finances. You're giving money away. That should bring a decrease in your finances. Yet it doesn't. It constantly causes increase in your finances. It causes promotion. It causes, it causes pay increase. It causes people out of the blue to hand you money. It causes checks to show up in the mail and refunds. Like the Word of God works. When you give financially, you will reap financially if you don't grow weary in well-doing. There is that withholdeth more than is meat, but attendeth to poverty. If you take an opportunity now to stop giving, you will end up in lack. That is just how it works. The devil is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. So there is, by, by constantly sowing, by constantly doing the word, we're keeping the blessing of God flowing. We're keeping increase flowing. If we stop sowing, what we're doing is we're opening up a doorway for the devil to be able to get in and start to operate in stealing, killing, and destroying. So if we stop giving now, it will stop our increase. It will, it will result in people try to save through. Let me back up and slow down a little bit. Sowing is the way you increase. Saving is a spiritual principle. We're not going to go through that now. But saving is a spiritual principle. But you don't save your seed. If you save your seed, it will dry up and it will die. You sow your seed. Sowing is more powerful than saving. Sowing brings an increase that saving can't. Sowing will far outproduce any amount of saving. When you try to save your way into prosperity, you just end up broke. The liberal soul, verse 25, shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. So keep believing God 
for your seed. Keep believing God for your seed to produce. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6 it says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. So this is a principle. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. The way that we come through shining, the way that we come through famine, the way that we come through recession, what we do is we sow bountifully and we reap bountifully. And we sow bountifully and we reap bountifully and we keep our confession out there on our seed and we keep speaking to our seed and calling in that harvest. Now every man as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So then we keep our heart right. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. This is the promise to the believer in times of famine, that God is able to make all grace abound towards you. You're not having to do it in and of yourself. You're not having to make the bones in your womb grow, right? Like we don't have to make a baby grow. We don't have to make grace abound towards us. God is the one who makes all grace abound towards us. These are spiritual principles that work regardless of what the outside circumstances are trying to do. That God will make all grace abound towards you, that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound every good work. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. And verse 10 says, Now he, that's God, now he, God, that ministereth seed to the sower, both ministereth bread for your food, that's you, and multiplies your seed sown, that's you, and he increases the fruits of your righteousness. So notice it's God that's ministering seed to the sower. This is why you can't, that people say you can't outgive God. Because the more that you sow, the more seed that he brings to you. Because he starts to count you as a sower. He starts to look at you and go, that's one of my sowers. Let's get more seed in their hand. And the increase comes supernaturally. It's not that you have to do it. That's, that's what I want to stress is that Proverbs 10, it says, The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Neither does toiling increase it. Like we're doing the word. We're putting our hand to the plow. We're, God will bless the work of our hands. So we're, we're not just laying back on the couch and doing nothing. We're giving God something to work through. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're providing, you know, we're, we're purposing where we're going to sow seed. And then God moves to put seed in our hand. God moves to make that seed increase. And on top of that, he ministers bread for your food. That bread for your food, that's for, your, that's for you. The seed that you sow, that's for those that you're sowing into being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. So the principles don't change. If anything, the principles are, are, are more so highlighted of who's doing the word and who's not doing the word when we go into a time where you can't just make it on your own. You have to have God moving on your behalf. You have to have that favor. You have to have those doors of opportunity opening. When he opens doors, no man can close them. In Abimelech, uh, let's turn back into Genesis, Genesis 26. So we're talking about that Isaac sowed in that time, Isaac sowed in that land and he received a hundredfold in that time of famine. You can believe God to receive a hundredfold return on your seed in that time of famine, in time of famine, in time of decline. Speak to your seed, call that seed in, tell that seed to produce for you, call that harvest in and declare that you're going to only increase, you're not going to decrease. You know, resist the devil. He'll flee from you. In verse 16, And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us. He said, Get out of here. <laughs> you are too mighty, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence, and he pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar, and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names, and after their names, by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley, and they found there a well of springing water. So this is a time of famine where there was no water, but Isaac's servants dug down, and they found water. This was huge for that region. Now the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water's ours. And he called the name of the well Isaac, or Isaac, because they strove with him. And so what did they do? They didn't get mad. He didn't get offended. He went on and he digged another well. Verse 21. Now they strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitnin. And verse 22. And he re removed from thence and he digged another well. So this is his third well. For they that strove not. And he called the name Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us. And we shall be fruitful in the land. You know, one of the things that encourages me with this is, 
when when Isaac when when he had an opportunity to get upset about these men taking away what seemed like you know a well would would be provision a well would be supply a well would 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 be able to to sustain them it's it's a channel that that provision can flow through so think of your job you know your job's a provision maybe you have a side hustle maybe you have uh, other work that you do different areas that bring income into your life if someone comes in and starts messing with that don't look at that as that's your provider that's just a well. Go dig another well. Believe God for the opportunities, for, for second opportunities, third opportunities. What are the things, where can God move? What, what has God placed in your heart? What has he gifted your hands with? What are the things that he, he can move and flow through? What are the God ideas that he's given you? What's that next well that you can go and start digging? And follow the Holy Ghost in it because you can't get stuck looking at a well seeing that as your provision, seeing that as the only answer. Don't get caught on the well, go dig another well. And if someone takes that well, don't get stuck there, go dig another well. Like see how God was able to move him to the place where they left him alone, they quit striving with him, and he, he basically called that place like, hey, the Lord had made room for us, like this is a place of, of peace where people leave us alone. So he didn't just get stuck on that first well, he didn't get stuck on that second well, like they were doing him wrong. Sometimes in work, people do you wrong. Sometimes there's promotions and it should be for you and somebody else takes it. Don't look at that well as God. Look at God as God. God is your provider. God's going to provide through different channels, different, different avenues, but He is the ultimate source of your supply. So don't get caught. You know, sometimes we're going to, there might be things that come up as we go through these next couple months and next couple years, but of you know with the economy doing what it's going to do but don't let that discourage you don't let the things and the events of a time of recession don't let those discourage you look to God your provider look for the opportunity where is it that he's moving me where is it that he's pointing me what's the direction that he's given me what's that little that little direction that I have in my spirit where's that leading me to go and then slowly move in that direction allowing the Holy Ghost to point you in in the right way God will provide for you. God will give you divine ideas. It's, it's the individuals that have the faith to believe God for their provision, have the faith to believe God to step out on the water. They're the ones that are going to see the blessing. When you stay in the boat, you just get to watch the other people get blessed. So don't get discouraged if men come against you. Don't get discouraged. In a time of famine, you laugh. In a time of famine, be encouraged. I like that. When, when, when he says laugh, you know, when you think about laughing, you're laughing with no fear. You're laughing with no regard for the, for the negative obstacles and the negative circumstances that are coming your way. Don't look at those things with fear and trembling. Look at those things with confidence. Look at it as just another opportunity for God to move in your life. And God is faithful and God is a good provider. Let every man as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And let me just wrap up in this. I want to encourage you, keep your heart right and keep your, your motives pure and remain cheerful. God loves a cheerful giver. You know, when, when you give, God doesn't need your money. He lives in heaven. He has everything. He made everything. He created everything with, with the words from his mouth. God doesn't need our money. When we give, or I'm saying money, but whatever it is that you're sowing, He doesn't need your material substance. What He receives is your obedience. He receives your heart. He receives your attitude. He receives your cheerfulness. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, nor on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. It's so important when we understand that when we're, when we're talking about prosperity and we're talking about having a, being a cheerful giver, it's all what's in our heart. Don't do this because you're feeling like you're having to do it, like you're being forced to have to give. Now the church wants more money. Now the ministry wants more money. Don't look at it that way. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Notice it's not just about being obedient, like, okay, I'm going to sow this seed. Okay, I'm going to give this money. I would rather use it for this, but uh, I know I'm supposed to be a sower, so now I'm going to have to sow this money. No, be willing. 
willing, have a willing heart. Like you're, this doesn't take long to change. It doesn't take a long time to correct. You just think, think, you know, when I think of being willing, when I think of, I think of the Apostle Paul, when he was standing in front of King Agrippa and he had his hands bound and he said, you know, oh, King Agrippa, I think myself happy because he's an opportunity to stand before, uh, before uh, King Agrippa and actually basically present the gospel message. And so here's a man in chains, a man imprisoned for the gospel's sake, and he's saying, I think myself happy. Well, I'm not in chains. I'm not in prison. You're not in chains. You're not in prison. Think yourself happy. You can be willing and obedient. Not just obedient, but you can be willing as well. It's just a heart change. Am I happy? Well, process the things. If you're not happy, why aren't you happy? Dig down in and figure out why you're not happy and go and change those things. Because if you'd be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So make sure that your heart stays right. We just talked about in Galatians about, uh, about don't grow weary in well-doing. Don't grow weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you don't faint. So don't faint. Don't grow weary. Keep your heart right. Keep that cheerfulness. Keep that joy. Laugh at these times of famine. Laugh at these at the every bad report that comes out should make you chuckle because it's not your report. It's not your recession. It's not your famine that you're going into. That's the world's problem. We've got an answer. We've got a solution. And it's we're not regarding the clouds. We're not regarding we're gonna sow. We're gonna give and we're gonna reap. And and God will be able to show forth his goodness and his blessing through our lives as we go through this time. So I hope this was an encouragement to you. We look forward to seeing you Sunday morning. God bless you guys.